Doing this one thing will help you maximize your brain power. And I am living proof of it. This one thing. Stay tuned. When I was going through custody battles, and I even hate the phrase custody battle, because it's it sets you up for failure, because it puts you in fighting mode. It, when you think battle, your hand just goes into a fist. And I say, let go of it. And I say, let go of it. So I remember seeing a person who is uh, a neuro, psychologist and they they specialize in neurology and how the brain works this is not a counselor this is the person that talks about the brain and how the brain works and I was like losing my memory I was forgetful I was leaving the house without things and it was really bizarre really bizarre I was forgetting keys I was forgetting where I put stuff. I would take my glasses off and put them down somewhere and not be able to find them. And this is, when was this? This was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I'll never forget what I learned. One of the reasons why I was getting forgetful, and it kind of disturbed me a little bit, and I've since taken care of it, was anger. Anger short circuits your brain. It's like putting sugar into a gas tank. The engine cannot run, it gets gummy, and then the cylinders freeze up. That's what happens. You can't, or putting sand where oil needs to go in your car, and the grit causes the cylinders to grind, the pistons to grind the cylinders, and the engine seizes up. So think about this. Anger is an emotion that hurts the brain. It makes the brain activity seize up. It makes the brain not work properly. And what really stinks about that is you will have made a lot of decisions based upon anger. So one of the things that I've had to do is just get rid of anger. People have said to me, you have an anger problem. I said, well, no shit. This is way back. You have an anger, well, no shit, I can't see my kids. You know, that's, that's what normal people experience. Well, here's the deal with that. Now, I'm navigating the road here, hold on. I need 76 West. All right. Here's the deal with that. The quickest way for a person to deal with anger is to detach. You can't take things personally. There was a book out about agreements. Was it like the five agreements or something to that effect? And the deal with that is there was one piece of advice there that said don't take things personally and I'm not a five agreements person I'm not an Eastern philosophy person but I am a truth person I believe if something is true and it works then I need to follow it I found that when I detached some people are more emotional. Some people are naturally more detached. I'm a feeling person. If you've taken the uh, Myers-Briggs at all, it will help you learn if you are a, a feeling person or a thinking person. And I have a tendency to be more feeling than thinking. So my task is to change, purposely change not run on emotions, but run more on logic. So you have to detach, which is a thinking, uh, what would be the word for that? A thinking component. It's very rare. Are you more thinking or more feeling? Some people 
It's on a continuum. You are either, it's not like you're either a thinking person or a feeling person. Everything is on a scale. I tended to run more on feelings and emotions than with logic. So my task was to be more logical and less emotional. I found that when I detached mentally, it's almost like the Mark Twain thing, where Mark Twain said, I've suffered a great many catastrophes. Most of them never happened, which means they were here and not outside. Or how about this? You control, you can't control the amount of pain in your life, but you can control the amount of suffering. Many times suffering is in our hands. And it's almost like the Epictetus thing that I shared on an earlier video. Men are not disturbed by things, but by their opinions about those things. So if you neutralize your opinions about loss, if you neutralize your opinions about divorce, about getting laid off or fired or not seeing your children or being single and not being married or going through a breakup or going through some kind of distress, you're probably disturbed more by the opinion about that thing than that thing in itself. That thing in itself doesn't have power over you unless you give it power. It's powerful. So one of the ways that I stopped becoming forgetful was to eliminate anger because there was no quicker way for me to start leaving things around the house than to allow anger to, to get a hold of me. I find that when I raised my voice on the phone, it did something to the neurons in my head. They were firing in ways that I couldn't control. I was losing sleep. I always would fall asleep, but I would wake up in the middle of the night with my mind just gears turning. And I'm not talking about ideas and good stuff. I'm talking about bad stuff, negative stuff, worrying stuff. I heard it said once that depression is dwelling on the past. Anxiety is dwelling on the future. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to derail anger and detach. And I know that's a hard task for many people. Detach. Become less emotional. And one of the best ways to do it is to just do it through acting detached, through acting unemotional, and then eventually it will work its way in. Take my word for it. That's a great piece of help for many of you, not everybody. Some of you it will resonate with. Some of you it will mean nothing. For those that are the more feeling types, this is wonderful, wonderful teaching for you. I made all the mistakes that a overly feeling person can make and suffer the consequences of many of those things. Try it. It's going to help you.